to this point, we've talked a lot about citations. We've discussed why we cite, what we cite, and how we cite. By now, you should all be familiar with the minutiae of the JAMA citation style. In this video, I want to discuss how to manage citations as you write. This may seem a bit tedious, especially considering that the assignments you're producing in Bibs 310, you don't have that many references to keep track of. However, most technical writing tasks you with keeping track of dozens, if not hundreds, of references. Good citation practices, then, are important to cultivate early. They will help you avoid inadvertently committing plagiarism, and they will ultimately make your work easier and faster. It's important to point out that there are many different systems for keeping track of references. I encourage you to play with different systems and see which works best for you. What follows then is not meant to be rigid rules. Rather, my intent is to give you an idea of the range of systems so you can begin to explore that for yourself. For this demonstration, we're going to look at a paragraph taken from Kelly et al. 2016, Transferring the Blues, Depression-Associated Gut Microbiota Induces Neurobehavioral Changes in the Rat. And we're going to think how we might manage 10 references that are cited in that lone paragraph. And so let's go to the paragraph, and here it is. One thing to notice is that in this lone paragraph, there are 10 citations. I want you to think about that for just a minute. This single paragraph uses almost as many references as you're expected to use for your entire capstone project. And that should give you an idea of how many citations you need to keep track of when you're doing technical writing professionally. The full paper cites nearly 70 papers. This is why citation management is really a skill you need to develop and to develop early on. It should also give you a sense of why it's not usually a good idea to write your draft without any citations at all. That may be tempting because worrying about references as you go along can disrupt the flow of your writing. Indeed, I find it extremely hard to cite while I write. The trouble with this approach, though, is that it can be even more difficult to remember which references you've used and where you used them if you don't cite along the way. The more references you have, the greater the risk you'll miss one or more of those references, which could leave you open to charges of plagiarism, regardless of your intent. A compromise I use, then, is to write no more than one, maybe two paragraphs before going back and leaving myself notes about which references I need to cite and where. And that really is the most basic, fundamental form of citation management, leaving yourself parenthetical notes about where you pulled information. It's simple, it's direct, and it's been around for as long as people have been using citation. And that's what we see in this sample paragraph. Here, I've just left notes about which references speak to each bit of information. I've used an author date format to do this for a couple of reasons. First, while I ultimately want this in JAMA style, which is a citation order system, there is absolutely no point in trying to assign citation numbers until you submit the final draft. That's because, of course, Every time you make an edit that inserts, deletes, or rearranges references, you have to renumber all of those references accordingly. It's much easier to just use author and date information and convert those to numbers when you're sure the draft is in its final form. Now, you might think that just using the author's last name would be enough, and in many cases, you'd be right. But this brings us to the second reason I include date information in my notes as well. It's not at all uncommon in technical writing to cite multiple papers by the same author. Often, these papers touch on similar topic. It be difficult to remember which paper you used where as you're preparing your draft. I also find it useful to keep a working bibliography as I go along. Every time I leave a note to myself in the text, I'll make sure to go and check to see if that reference is already in the bibliography or not. If it's not, I'll put it there. It's not at all important that the working bibliography be in any particular format. 
but I find it easiest to list references in alphabetical order by the first author's last name. I do that because it's not uncommon for you to need to use a reference in more than one place. Uh, this way, it makes it easier for me to go and check to see if I've already used that reference before. As we can see here, these references are all in a variety of different styles, and that's absolutely fine. The only thing that's important is to make sure that you have all of the information you need for the final formatting. Um, and for JAMA, that means you need to have the author's names, you need to have the article title, the journal title, and then you need the issue information. In other words, you need the year of publication, the volume, the issue if it's available, and the inclusive page numbers for article ID. You should also have the DOI if you're submitting to a JAMA journal that requires the DOI. Now, I said that it doesn't really matter what format any of this is in because you're going to be reformatting it anyway. Uh, that said, the closer your working bibliography entries are to the output style you're ultimately going to need, the easier your final formatting will be. The flip side of this, of course, is that many journals, when you go to download the PDF, will have a how to cite this paper either as text or a link. And when you can click on that, you can copy it and paste it. And for me, that's faster than worrying about making sure everything is formatted correctly in my working bibliography. That said, it's really just a matter of where you want to spend your time. Do you want to spend your time up front uh, formatting or at the end formatting? And for me, I prefer to do it at the end. So this gives us our working draft, in this case, just a single paragraph, and I have the working bibliography that goes with that. And once I'm done and I'm sure that I have everything the way it needs to be before I go to submit the paper, it's only then that I'll go in and make sure that I get everything formatted. Uh, and so then it's just a matter of going in and doing that. And so for instance, here we see that the very first reference here is Bravo et al. 2011, which happens to be the first one here. And you'll see that this is not at all in the correct JAMA format. So my first task is then to go through in each entry and make sure that it conforms to the JAMA citation style. Here we see Bravo, comma, J period, A period, comma. That's not right for JAMA style. We don't use commas to separate initials from last names in JAMA, and we don't use periods after the initials. So we need to fix those. That again here for Forsyth. Rid of that period. Here we don't need. Now there are a lot more than six authors on this paper, so I only need to format those first three, and then I can just replace all of those with et al. 2011, that's the year of publication in JAMA. That doesn't go here, so I'm just going to copy, or I'm just going to cut that out, and I'm going to place it about where it's supposed to go, which I know is supposed to be before the issue information, so I'm just going to place that there for now. I'm going to check the title of the article to make sure that it's in sentence case, and here we see that it is. The only thing that's capitalized is GABA, which is a standard abbreviation, so it should be. The next thing is to look at the journal title, and we see that it should be abbreviated. It is. It should also be italicized, which it's not right here, so I'm going to make that italic. The year does not go in parentheses in JAMA style, so I'm going to get rid of those parentheses. The year should be followed by a semicolon. I'm going to get rid of that period and the space. The next thing that should be there is the volume number. And if you have it, then the issue number in parentheses. And finally, we have the inclusive page numbers, which are here, but in JAMA, that should be separated with a colon rather than a comma as it was there. So now this reference is in the right format. Now all I have to do is go through and do that for all the rest.
Okay, now we have all of the uh, citations in the correct JAMA format. So the next thing I would do is put them in the order that they're cited in the paper so that I can number them appropriately. And now we have all of our citations numbered correctly. The final thing, of course, then is to go through and replace these parenthetical notes that we left to ourselves with the correct in-text citation format for JAMA. And there we have it. Fun, right? I'm sure all of you are on the edge of your seats right now, eager to format your own bibliographies, right? Of course not, that's absurd. Almost nobody enjoys formatting citations. If you do, you might wanna consider a career in copy editing. There's good money to be had in that, so don't take that too lightly. If you're like most of us though, this ranks among the least engaging activities you can participate in. Here's the thing, there's absolutely no reason for you to do this manually. I mean, unless you really want to and have lots of extra time. To show you why, let's return back to our example the way it originally appeared. Here we see that same paragraph that we started with. It has all the same parenthetical notes and it has the same working bibliography. Using a plugin provided by a program called EndNote, let's see if we can speed up the process just a little bit. Notice up here, there's an EndNote X9, that's version 19. Click on that. And then I want to select the citation style that I want in this drop-down menu. Here's JAMA. I click that. Voila! That's all there is to it. You can see now that we have all of the in-text citations formatted correctly, and we can see that the working bibliography is in the correct format as well, with all of the references in the proper order. And we can just as easily switch to other styles. Here's that same paper in Vancouver style. Here's that paper in the style for neuroscience. And here we are back to JAMA. So I will often have students ask me about citation generators that they find on the internet. Those are fine. However, there are a few things you should be aware of when using them. First, they can be incredibly quirky when it comes to output styles. For many of them, you have to remember to select the proper output style for every single entry. If you're doing this at the last minute, which you most likely are, it's easy to forget to do that. Secondly, while most of them will put your bibliographic entry into the right format, they won't format your in-text citations, nor will they automatically update numbering as you edit your paper. You can see here that a reference management program does all of that for you and using a reference management program every time you need to insert, delete, or rearrange your references, it's going to keep track of all of the numbering for you so you don't have to keep track of that for yourself. I've shown you here EndNote simply because it's the one I'm most familiar with. I started using EndNote with version 3 and that came out sometime in the mid-1990s. Uh, however, there are a host of other citation management programs on the market today. Many of these are proprietary, but many of them are also open access. 
The good news is most of them work pretty much the same way. Most of them also have plugins for whatever your preferred word processing program might be. Now, EndNote is not a free program, or at least it's usually not free. Luckily, Texas A&M has paid for you to have a permanent license to whatever the current version of EndNote is. The library has a link you can follow to get more information about EndNote and how to download the software. So here we see a page with training information about how to get that through the library, what citation management does, and some quick videos to help get you started. It also then has an option for you to download the software yourself. And so you just follow this link to the TAMU software store and you can get that for yourself. These programs all have a bit of a learning curve to them. However, none of them is difficult and there are tons of tutorials online. I will link to a couple of them on eCampus, um, and then you have the library guides here. As you've seen, though, taking just a little bit of time to tackle these learning curves saves you a world of headaches down the road, and I strongly recommend that you use citation management software. Using the proper citation style should be easy points on your assignments in 310. However, students often miss those really easy points due to fine details that they miss, especially in the rush to turn in your assignments. A program like EndNote is your best friend in those times.